Hey guys, it's Tom here with a second part to my trains for scale, or I just said that, oh my god, trains for sale video. And yeah, so this is part two, I'm going to make it really quick again here. And we're going to start off with this diorama that I built not too long ago. Now this thing is probably one of my best uh, scenery works that I've done, other than the fact that it has no real longitude to it because it's just a flat piece of foam. But... It is a uh, diorama depicting a grade crossing next to the edge of a field of something. Now this field, I'll just start with this um, section here. As you can see, or might be able to see, it's kind of super elevated where these um, plants, I guess you could call them, are growing. So the dirt, which it is actual dirt, is like overlapping and it has these uh, pieces of foliage here that go over then it has a scratch built wooden fence along there so that's really cool it's made out of wire and um, just balsa wood and then you go over here on the back actually so here um, there is just a bunch of pieces of foliage to kind of depict like the end of it so that's done up. And then the track is code 83. It looks like code 100 actually, but it is code 83. With um, medium buff ballast by Woodland Scenics. Here's a little fact for anyone who didn't know. Woodland Scenics ballast, surprisingly enough, is made out of crushed up um, nuts. Like it's nuts that fall from trees, I forget the name of them. But that's what they're made of, that's why it's so light. It's not actual rock, it's kind of funny how they do that. But it comes out fine. Um, tracks weathered, as you can see there. Now we get to my favorite part of this thing, the road. The road is made out of thin styrene that I painted and I uh, put more paint on. And then right here, as you can see, there's an asphalt patch. And what that is, is... Um, a little section of super, super fine um, ballast. I put that down, glued it, and then um, painted over it with black to depict kind of an asphalt patch right there. And that came out really good. And then there's these all brass prizer grade crossings right there that are movable, which is really cool. So yeah, and then there's an edge, I guess. That thing can be shipped out for 50 bucks, maybe I can do lower. If you buy something else too, like you can buy something from the other video too, this is just an add-on I guess you could say. If you buy something else too, it could be taken lower because of shipping prices. But yeah, so that is 50 bucks. I'm not editing this video, I'm just going to put it right on Facebook or um, right on YouTube. That is why um, there's no intro. Speaking of Facebook, though, we do have a Facebook page, youtube.com, or I'm doing that again, facebook.com slash spazman13579. Go like the page, you can get updates, and there will be contests on there very shortly. Zoom in a little bit here for the next one. This is a MRC SD45-2 sound decoder found in the Athern Genesis SD45-2 models. That was like the SP Bicentennial and that kind of thing. I got this from a guy. This was, um, yes, if you're wondering, this is a demonic MRC sound decoder. But I figured out that there was a loose connection in one of these capacitors. I don't know what that had to do with anything, but it did. Fix that, and now it works fine. I took it out of the engine. Well, I tested it, obviously, took it out of the engine. And there it is. And it has the speaker too. The speaker just plugs right into that little module. But yeah. The speaker's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Um, if you're wondering, that's where you placed one because the diaphragm was cracked on the original. And I replaced that. So yeah, this was a demonic MRC sound decoder, but I did fix it. And now it's working perfectly fine. Another thing, it has the sounds for an EMD 645, 645 supercharger, and the SD45-2 and SD45. So it is a quite versatile sound decoder. But to get those, you just have to change the CVs is all. 
and that's very, very easy. You should not need a booster to program this either. This can be shipped out to you for 25 bucks, and hey, it's perfectly fine sound decoder. A normal decoder can almost be $25. So I think, I think that's a pretty good price for it. Next up is another decoder. This is a specialized NCE decoder, and this was for a um, Atlas S4. I have an Atlas S4, kind of a funny story. I got the engine, the guy said it had no DCC in it, so I bought a $10 decoder from him that was meant for the Atlas S4. It was the same model as this one. When I opened it up to put the decoder in, there was a decoder already. So I got one of these extra. And I just never did anything with it. It could probably work in something else if you... You could probably just like cut that down and use that part and then solder different tabs onto it. But it could work for an SW1200 or something like that. Anything really, but it's specialized for the Atlas S4. That can be sold to you and shipped out for 15 bucks for a perfectly good decoder. Last HL scale piece we have is a super detail Southern Bay Window Caboose. It's a really nice model, I was just working on it today. On the ends here we have yellow painted uh, handrails, all the um, ladders and stuff. Those are brass, like the normal ones are metal, but these have brass for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, KD couplers on top here, the smoke jack, smoke stack. It's not a smoke stack, it's a smoke jack. I don't know why they call it that. But uh, right there too. We'll focus, there you go. It has a red and a green um, little, like a crystal insert thing. And that's meant to show like lights or something on it. Marker lights, yeah, that's it, marker lights. But yeah, so that's a really cool feature up there that does not come with the stock kit. Uh, trucks and wheels are not painted or weathered, but they're, they roll perfectly fine. There's the other end. Not weathered or anything, but it is detailed to the point that it surpasses the original kit. And that thing can be sent to you for 10 bucks. Our final thing here is not HL scale train related. I'll zoom out for this. Um, this thing was really cool. It was given to me by some guy at a train show, but I never really had a use for it. If you can kind of read it there. I'll get the glare out, but it is the Conrail 10 year anniversary, and it's really cool. It's like a little placard that goes on there, and it has this blue felt around it, and it has real um, stained wood, and that's metal. Oh no, it's not metal, it's painted, painted wood, is that stuff, and then, but that's all varnished wood. And it has what looks to be an EMD GP or SD, I'm not sure what it is. But it's like hauling a big train going around there. And if you go to the back side, it has this big letter. You can pause right now to read it, but it's a big letter showing their gratitude towards their workers and stuff. And it has Stuart Reed, the president, and L. Stanley Crane, the chairman, as their signatures on there. Not real signatures, as an auto pen signature. But yeah, and it was made by Balfour, Massachusetts. So yeah. That can be shipped up to you for 10 bucks. And thanks for watching this video. My battery's dying. And I hope you enjoyed it. PM me for any information on anything, or you can comment.